Hi everyone, in this lecture I'm going to introduce you to CSS. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. It is the kind of language that is going to deal with styling your web pages, styling your HTML elements, and in turn, styling your web pages. Now, how can we find out where the CSS hides for any specific website? As you go, go to right click, you say inspect. And from there, if you bring, oops, if you bring this page up, I'm just going to increase this web page. So on the right side, you can see all the CSS code for that website. So if we take a look at this example, which we take in, which we, uh, uh, which we looked at in our uh, HTML Essentials course, so if you click on it, you're going to see that it has selected that. So this is the HTML element. What styles have been applied on this HTML element are on this right side of the screen. So these are all the CSS properties. CSS styles are CSS properties. So. HTML has elements, CSS has properties. You can see that the font size is 4 rem. Now, you can increase that. So if I deselect it, you can see the font size is smaller. Again, the, uh, you cannot change the website because it's stored on a server. And when you refresh the page, the server is going to respond to that HTTP request, which is refreshing the page. As the user, you send that to a server through an API endpoint, and then the server is going to respond with the entire web page again. So if you refresh the page, this title is going to show up as like the big title again. There we go. So here we have the CSS for any website, and there is, an, there is this tab styles, and then there is another tab which is computed. Now, as far as HTML was concerned, there wasn't like something you need you needed to know to master everything there was just that like everything is an element in html and when you know that you basically can master html but as far as css is concerned css has one idea that if you understand it you will master css now uh, it is not arguable it is not debatable there is like one idea and then there is like another very small idea smaller than the first one which you need to know as well like like there are these two ideas like if i correct myself two ideas that if you know them you will master css the first and the most important one is the css box model and this is a representation of the css box model you can see it right here. We have margin, border, padding, and then we have the content. If you m understand what this is, you will never face any problem aligning or structuring your CSS websites. Your websites, never. And the second one is CSS specificity. Now, it is like a little bit of a difficult word, but I've fortunately, I've mastered the pronunciation of this word, CSS specificity. So, CSS specificity says which rule has to be applied first. We are going to take a look at both of them in our in the upcoming lectures, so don't worry about it. Now that we know where CSS resides for any website, let's go back to our structure which we had for our HTML, and I'm just going to create a CSS file as well. The way that you can create a CSS file is you just say new file, and I'm going to say one dot css underscore intro now the extension is going to be let me zoom in dot css there we go so this is the extension for a css file now each css file requires an html file because css without html is nothing css is applied on html elements therefore we are going to create a an html file as well the name is going to be the same but the extension is going to be dot html let's zoom out so i'm going to bring this here first i'm going to create a document and i'm going to say css introduction there we go so i'm going to save that i am going to go oh, go ahead and open it up with live server so this is our web page now there are three ways that you can connect or you can link a your css file to your html file first you have to connect it then the styles will be applied on the html uh, the first one, which has, uh, which is like 
A bad practice, of course, is internal CSS. Um, sorry, inline CSS. So the first one is inline CSS, bad practice. Bad, bad practice. This is like considered really bad. The second one is internal CSS. Internal CSS, which is used for small amounts. Uh, used in uh, small amounts like if you have a small amount of code small amount of code then you can use internal CSS we act we have actually looked at it before and that is when we use the style element the third one and the best practice is external CSS we have a concept in uh, software engineering and that is separation of concerns it is basic it basically says that you have to separate different files from each other so you're not like so the maintainability of those of that project is easier if you incorporate everything within one file it is going to be very difficult for you to scale that application that's why you have to separate these these different technologies a css file has uh, like an html file should only contain html code not any other code a css file should only contain css code so this is called separation of concerns this is like best practice because this is going to separate it for us so what is internal css uh inline css first so if i have an h1 and i'm going to say some heading inline css is applying css styles as html attributes so you just say style and in here you say font size and you set it to let's say 100 pixels and if you save it you can see that this is 100 pixels you can inspect this by coming to inspect bring this down and I'm gonna bring this body up uh, let me just zoom out can I zoom out there we go so I'm just gonna yeah I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more let's bring this up a little bit more so if I select our heading, you can see that the element that style is font size 100 pixels. It comes from this inline CSS. If you untick it, it is going to go small. If you if you take it again, it is going to go big. Now if you untick it and if you refresh the page, it is going to go big because I have applied this style. It there is no server, but it is saved locally, so it is going to communicate to this inline style again. So this is inline CSS. I'm going to create the same uh, H1. I'm going to leave it as it is. Now I'm going to fix it. Uh, internal CSS is if you add in, in the head part of your HTML document, if you add in a style. Now, any CSS, uh, whenever you want to style something, you need to select that HTML element, then apply the styles. How can we select it? One of the ways is using the element's name. So the element name is H1. And you say font size 120 pixels. Click on this and there we go, 120 pixels. Now this is the second way. I'm going to comment this one out as well. The third and most popular and best practice way is to create a link. So inside the head part, of course, you are, you are going to create this inside the head because all the information about your files will be contained in here. So you're going to say link. It says, what is the relationship? It is style sheet. Where is the href? You know the href refers to the URL address. Where is it? So they are in the same directory. So as with HTML elements, you just say one dot CSS. So it is one dot CSS intro dot CSS. When you save it now behind the scenes, there is a link from your CSS file to your HTML file. And inside the CSS file, you're going to write H1, open the declaration block, and you're going to say font size like 150 pixels, color, you can say blue. And you save it, there we go. It's 150 pixels and the color is blue. This is a best practice way of doing it. That's it for this lecture. See you in the next one.